uh, our next, uh, if, if there are no questions uh, anymore, our next uh, participant is Bernd Ullmann from Germany, the analog computer man. Hi, thank you very much. I hope you can all see my shared terminal window. And I would like to talk 10 yes. minutes about uh, a simple programming language which a friend of mine and I have developed over the last more than a decade by now. Um, I was always intrigued with the beauty and simplicity of Forth, but what I was missing uh, were the um, complex data structures which are supported by APL. My personal favorite programming language, sorry to say this, uh, still is APL, but APL has its quirks. <laughs> the horrible character set, the problem of getting a working APL interpreter. And so I wanted to create a blend of APL and forth. And that is what uh, Lang5 is. Um, uh, and I will show you how it works. Uh, Lang5 itself is written in Perl, by the way. So do not expect it to be very quick, but uh, expect it to be very beautiful uh, with respect to the programs you can implement. Um, I think it would be best if I show you some, two simple examples. First of all, let us, for example, simulate um, the th throwing of a dice. We have a six-sided dice, and I would like to throw this dice uh, 100 times and compute the uh, arithmetic mean of the outcomes of these dice throws. So what I could do, for example, is I could uh, push a six on the stack and apply a special command, question mark, which generates a pseudo random number. And if I do this over and over again, I would get different pseudo random numbers. Pretty simple, not exciting. But the interesting thing of combining forth with APL features is that I could, for example, easily create a vector of, for example, 10 value six. Now I have a vector which is sitting on top of the stack it was sitting on top of the stack before I printed it with a dot. I have a vector with six scalars, scalar components, each having the value six. And I can apply the word question mark, which generates a random number to every element of this vector just by applying it to the vector as a whole. Doing this results in a vector like that. So now I have created 10 pseudo-random numbers between zero and six, excluding the value six. I could now, for example, apply the word integer to this whole vector and get an integer vector with the outcomes of my simulated uh, dice throws. But uh, these run from zero to five instead from uh, one to six. So I will add one to every vector element and so I can create a vector with 10 pseudorandom elements between one and six. You see no loop, nothing, just linear mm -hmm. algebra. And to, create, to compute the arithmetic mean uh, of this vector, I have to shrink this vector down back to a, to a scalar. And this is done in APL style with an operation called reduce. And the idea is I would like to apply a binary operator a plus between each two successive vector elements. And I can do this if I push a plus operator on the stack. Note the single quotes in front of the operator. This pre prevents the inter interpreter from interpreting the plus as an operation and instead just pushes it as an instruction on the stack. Applying the reduce operator will then yield the sum of all elements of this vector. Still no loop, nothing at all. The only thing I have to do now is divide it by 10 and I get the result, uh, the arithmetic mean of uh, throwing a dice for 10 times. Of course, that's not very interesting, but it gets a little bit more interesting if we define a new word. I can, of course, extend uh, the feature list of Lang5 uh, as I can extend the vocabulary of a traditional fourth interpreter by defining new words. And you can do a lot more than I do with these simple examples here. You can, for example, define unary and binary words, which you can then, for example, apply with reduce to elements in vectors and matrices and the like. But here I will restrict myself to simple applications of 
uh, word definitions. So I could, for example, um, put all that what I did uh, manually in a new word, throw dice, and this will expect a number on the stack which denotes how often I want to throw my dice. So I have a six and they're over and reshape my, um, my uh, scalar into a vector, apply the pseudo random number generator, discard all the floating point parts, add a one, um, reduce it to a single value, swap the remaining two scalars on the stack, divide it, and I've defined a new word. And now I can, for example, say, 100 throw dice and point, and I get the result of simulating throwing a dice for 100 times. So I have oh all God. the advantages of APL, but uh, I also have all the advantages of fourth. And time permits, I've, I'm five minutes into my 10 minute talk to show you a second example. One example I like very much personally. I have to admit, this is not very, fast uh, and the example to follow is extremely slow but it's very very elegant and the basic idea is not from uh, me i think uh, i've borrowed it from Alan perlis um, what i want to show you is um, how to generate a list of primes for example i would like to generate at first a list of primes with all prime numbers in the interval uh, ranging from 2 to 10 for example and to this i would first generate a vector Nine yota generates a vector with nine elements with uh, as an ar arithmetic um, 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 uh, uh, arithmetic sequence one element is just uh, incremented by one to yield the next element and I would like to have a vector spanning from two to ten not from zero to eight so I just add two to this vector and get a vector from two to eight uh, to ten I could now duplicate this vector and now I have two vectors of the very same structure on top of my stack. What I can do now is I can perform an outer product. I have two one-dimensional data structures on the top of my stack and I will perform an outer product thus creating a two-dimensional data structure, effectively a multiplication table. So if I do this, I have a multiplication table without the column and row number one. And the interesting thing of this table is this table contains everything but not a single prime, of course, since every element in this table is at least a product of, 10, uh, of two integers. So no element in this table can be a prime number. So what I could do to generate a list of prime numbers now is I could, you have seen, I uh, inserted another dup, dup, dupli, duplicate uh, my original vector. I could now check which elements in my original vector are not contained in this matrix. Here I have a binary vector that tells me that the element number two, the first one, is not contained in this matrix, correct, since it's a prime. Three is also not contained in this matrix, correct. Four is in the matrix, but not five, but six. Seven is not contained, A is contained, nine is contained, and 10 is part element of this matrix. So if I negate this vector, I get a one at every position where I have a prime number. And all I have to do now is create a third copy of my original ve vector and use this copy to select all the elements which have a corresponding one in the selection vector. And what I get is, ta-da, a list of primes between two and 10. <laughs> and I can, of course, extend this to a list of primes between two and 100 just by enlarging my original vector. And you see, I get a list of primes between two and 100. The interesting thing of this is due to the APL-like features, you basically never need any loops at all. You also typically do not need any conditionals at all. All the things you do, you do with basic linear algebra. The disadvantage of this approach is it's pretty slow. For example, you, you have seen, if I compute a list of primes in between two and 100, it takes a short moment of time and that's a four gigahertz monster max, so to speak. And the reason for this is I have to create a matrix, matrix with 10,000 elements on the fly 
just to perform an is element of instruction on this ma matrix. So it's not fast, but it's at least in my humble uh, opinion, a pretty beautiful approach to doing exploratory, explorative mathematics or the like. I personally uh, really use this language in my daily work. I even used it at customer locations uh, for doing uh, analysis in financial mathematics and the like. And if you are interested in this, you can um, see and download this at that link. Okay. GitHub com burnt Arnold and then lang five. I will post it in the chat window as well. Thank you very much for your interest. And that was my 10 minutes worth of talking for today. Wonderful, Bernd. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Clap, clap. Thank you a lot. Mm. It definitely out of the box ideas. Well done. What's the um, way you store that vector? Like, obviously, traditional fourth just tends to have, you know, normal integers and double integers. So, I what sort of approach are you taking? Yeah, I, um, I heavily use all the data structures available within Perl. Uh, that was the reason to select Perl, or the, I could have done it in Python as well as the underlying language. So yep. I can, for example, inherit things like undefined um, and mm. don't have to take care of it. So I only implemented basically the um, fourth um, structure around uh, the APL instructions, but uh, everything else is done in uh, pure Perl. Hmm. That's cool. Yeah, understood. <clears throat> a two cents uh, of uh, um, Charles Moore when invented force, the f one of the first uh, uh, installations or or, or uh, yes, installations of force was over Fortran. <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't know this. Okay, yes. that's impressive. So you are mm. you are following the same path, and this is the interesting uh, part of force: mixing two languages. Yes, you have a terrible, a terrible weapon. No? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, thank just you. Just point, point it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's good. I like that because it's similar to the kind of programming that I like to do, um, you know, more functional sort of stuff like that. I'd like to see more of that in fourth. Uh, Baron, uh, Peter introduced you as a person involved in analog computing. Yes. Um, uh, how, how, how do you mix the, the analog computing and um, something like false? <laughs> um, that's in the pipeline as of now. Um, the idea is to implement a fourth interpreter on top of our um, hybrid controller. Um, we are about to couple analog computers with digital computers. And as of now, it's a pretty large mess of a lot of um, AVR assembler, assembly language, C, uh, Perl, Python, and whatever. And the idea is to um, implement a decent fourth interpreter on the hybrid controller that is part of the analog computer. So you can program the overall operation of the analog computer in a more or less high level language. So that is where fourth comes into play. I was not aware that analog computing is used at all anywhere still. Um, we are currently uh, developing a modern analog computer on chip. So we are developing a reconfigurable analog computer in the CMOS process, uh, which is for, will be, um, for example, applicable to high performance computing problems. Since uh, if you have problems described by sets of coupled differential equations, analog computers are still pretty much faster than traditional digital computers. Okay, yeah. Uh, very interesting, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, myself yes, now. Please, please. Uh, I had a question. Um, so, are you using something like an FPGA, but it's an analog FPGA? No, we are not using an FPGA. We are developing a dedicated CMOS chip, which contains all the elements of a reconfigurable analog computer. So we are really developing a new integrated circuit. 
Wow. Okay. Awesome. Ben is the new Charles Moore. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Too much of a cover. There, there can't be a second one. Yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, uh, this is excellent as always. My computers are fake. This is a bitmap, but Bernd's are real. He's, behind, he's in the front of a wall. A wall behind him is real. It, it is real, but in this case, it stands one floor below me. So this <laughs> pretty much masks the mess in my lab at the moment. <laughs> okay. I'm I have one more question. So are, are you going to implement, uh, I mean, fourth would be an ideal language as the interface between yes. the human and your, so is fourth is going to be your interface language to your, yes. Yes. will it be on chip or, or off chip? That is a good question. Uh, we are currently debating this in our company. I personally would prefer having it off chip since I don't want to have any steep clock signals on the very same silicon as my precious analog hardware. But on the other hand, um, there are many applications which are ideally suited for a, s a system on chip design. And this would of course uh, force me to include a fourth program digital controller which takes care of the configuration and parameterization of the analog computer. So we are still debating this. Fascinating. <laughs> I see 